Welcome to River Foursquare, where we meet in community to discuss God's word together, not just watch somebody talk about it, but actually discuss it together, learn, memorize scripture, work together to meet the needs of our community, and we just love being together. If you're part of River in the Seattle area, you can go to riverforsquare.org and check out the different communities that are there and our all next all community gathering where we have worship and prayer, communion and time just to connect with one each other. You can uh, next one is April 20th at Grace Church in Federal Way at 6 p.m. So come on out and join us for that. If you're watching this and you found us on YouTube, can you go ahead and like and subscribe? We would love to have you not miss out on a single one of our messages. We teach through the word, uh, book by book, verse by verse, and you don't want to miss any of the, the different verses and, and passages that we go through. Also, if you're part of River, thank you so much for continuing to support what God is doing in and through River. You can do that by giving giving at riverforsquare.org and clicking on that give tab, or you can text 84321. And Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you that you revealed the Father to us. As we get into scripture today, we get into John. Holy Spirit, be the teacher. Be the one who reveals truth to us and use the gifts and talents you've placed in us to do that very thing. In Jesus' name, amen. So last week we talked about that in John 14, 6, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him. That this is the truth. This is the truth. This is it. There is no other name under heaven by which man can be saved except the name of Jesus as Acts. And for a believer, that means the implications thereof of those statements means this, that there is peace in this life for a believer. There's peace in this life. That the life in Jesus is the only life we need. It's the only life we need in Jesus. That there are answers and decisions found in Jesus for every of life's tr uh, trials and struggles and, and indecisions and big moments. There's answers for those in Jesus. And that because of all that, the mission is important. That isn't just to... It isn't just enough. I had to watch my words. It, this isn't just enough to, to internalize. It isn't just enough that it goes, hey, I go to church and I'm good. Hey, I have my Christian friends. That's good. No, that's not enough because the mission is important that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And if we just internalize it and we don't externalize it, if we don't share our faith, it is It is less impactful as Jesus commanded it to be. See, I had to make sure I didn't like, right? I had to like change the phraseology, right? It isn't impactful as Jesus in, intended it to be. It was this last command. He goes, go everywhere and tell everyone what I've done. We have to share our faith. We have to share the fact that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life, that there is no salvation in no other name except his. It is our job. It is the mission, and it's important. Back to the question. So okay. it's time for a discussion question in our communities. How did you see Jesus at work in your life this week? Did he speak to you through the Bible readings that you were doing? Did he remind you of something that we've been talking about in the last few weeks in the book of John? Did bring you a scripture bring to your a scripture remembrance? to your remembrance? That's a fancy church word, isn't it? It is remembrance. 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 Uh, did he um, answer any prayers? Did he give you an opportunity to love someone with Jesus's life and love this week? Talk about that with your community. What was it like with Jesus and you?
the tall tale kid, the TTK, right? The tall tale kid. I think everyone's had a tall tale kid. Here's what I mean. That's that one kid in school who just made stuff up. You're just like, you're a liar, right? I mean, maybe we call them that. I did. Maybe we call them that to their faces, but they were the tall tale kid. They would make up stories. I've known two tall tale kids in my life. I had one in elementary school through junior high, and then I had another, a new one in, in high school, and then I had the, the OG tall tale kid in high school as well. They were the tall tale kids. They would just make up stories, and, and these stories were so ridiculous. I was looking at them like, no. That's not Is true. it different than like I caught a fish this big or this big or this big? Like No, more, like more we were driving down a mountain and then okay. So here here's the most famous one. So mind you, they both I went to high school with both the 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 OG tall tail kid and the new kid, tall tail kid. I'm not gonna tell you their names. Um that we they were part of our lunch group. Right, or you know, the group you ate lunch with, everybody had a lunch group. They're part of our lunch group. And one day, the first, the OG tall tail kid starts sharing about how they were driving and their car had to break down. It was this horrible thing. And meanwhile, the next, the other tall tail kid, he goes, Ah, that's nothing. And he's sure, and they keep bouncing stories after story, and they're getting bigger and bigger. And bigger until this one bird goes, yeah, we were going down a mountainside one time. And then the brakes went out. And we're like, and we almost went off the side of the road. And at this point, I barged in. And I'm like, that's not true. And I attacked him. And you know what the crazy thing is? They both came at me. They both attacked me. And I was at that point, I was like, I think there's a proverb that was it never disrupt a fool in their folly. I think there's a proverb about that. Tall tale kids, you can't believe anything they said. It's it's not of credible substance. It's not of credible substance. Here's the thing. We know Jesus is trustworthy and true. Jesus is not the tall tale kid. He is trustworthy and true, right? Scripture tells us, over and over again, the character and the nature of the God that he's faithful in Lamentations chapter 3, verse uh, 22 to 23, says that the steadfast love of our Lord never ceases. His mercies come never come to an end. They are new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. Jesus is trustworthy and true, and we are to believe Jesus. Now, we're in John chapter 14. If you haven't Flipped ahead a couple book, a couple chapters. This is red. What I mean by that is, you know, in your Bibles, they make red letter versions. And when texts are in red, it means Jesus is speaking. It's just a way to identify. If you look, it's red. It's solid red. 14, 15, 16, 17. It's solid red. And this is all taking place in the Leonardo da Vinci painting picture. Right, It's all right there, which is horribly inaccurate. But it's all taking place at the Last Supper. And John 14, 15, 16, and 17, well, really all the Gospels, but really those depend on one thing. Do we believe Jesus? Not believe in Jesus. Believe Jesus. And do we have a deep down trust knowing what he says? Do we believe Jesus? It's important because... It, John 14, 15, 16, 17, challenge us. They are challenging because they're all based on the premises. Do we believe Jesus? And that's funny thing is that's how Jesus starts off his dissertation is not the right word. Jesus starts off his explanation of his last words he wants the disciples to get. And it's all based off, do you believe me? So, Here we go. John chapter 14, verse 7 and onward. So if you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. 
Last Supper, Judas has already left to go portray Jesus. And after Judas leaves and tells Peter, Peter, you're going to deny me three times before morning. Jesus starts off this whole explanation of what he wants to tell them. And we find it in verse 1. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. And look what he says here next. He says, believe in God, believe in me. Believe in God, believe in me. And then, then we have Thomas who speaks up and goes, well, show us the way to heaven. Because Jesus already told him heaven's a great big place. Show us the way to heaven. Jesus responds and goes, I am the way, the truth, life. No one comes to the Father except through us. And then what happens next? Philip says, well, show us the Father. And what did, what did Philip say? He goes, and that's enough. Meaning, show us who the Father is and we'll believe you. Show us who the Father is and we'll understand. Show us, do this, and we will get it. Jesus responds, he goes, Philip. Philip, Philip, Philip. If you had known me, Jesus, you would have known the Father. And you would have seen the Father already. Philip that shows the Father. Jesus goes, no, 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 no. You've already seen the Father. Because you've seen me. Jesus responds, he goes, I've been with you this whole time. And you still don't know me. You still don't know who I am. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And Jesus goes on, he goes, explain, he goes, what I'm telling you isn't even in my own authority. I'm speaking in the Father's authority. And then Jesus says this, he goes, believe me. Believe me. Believe the words I'm saying. That's what he gets at. Remember, this, this contrast at the beginning goes, believe in God, believe in me. And they're not getting it. They're not getting it. They're not getting it. Jesus is like, just believe me. And then he tacks on it. He goes, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or if you can't fathom that, just believe me because of what you've seen me do. Let my actions and my words and, and everything you've seen, let that speak. Here's the thing. Jesus is the visible Father. Not that Jesus and the Father are the same person. They are not. See, basics, episode one, it's Trinity. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God. They're separate, yet equal. Jesus is the visible Father. If we've seen Jesus, we've seen the Father. Why? Because the, the same character, though distinctly different. Episode, just go see basics, episode one. That'll explain all this. The works Jesus does, the Father does. The way Jesus loves us, the Father loves us. How Jesus came to be a servant, that is the heart of the Father to give to us. Now, let's look. Now, mem a reminder. This book is written by the Apostle John. In John chapter 1, John tells us what he's going to tell us as you, every good author should. The first part is called the introduction. You tell them what you're going to tell them, and then you tell them, and then you tell them what they told, what you told them, right? It's proper communication 101. And so we go way back to John chapter 1, and he opens up his letter saying this, John chapter 1, verse 18. No one has ever seen God the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. That he is Jesus. So we should have read it like this. That we should have read it like this. That no one has ever seen God, the only God who's at the Father's side. Jesus has made the Father known. So John, is he opens up his book explaining what Jesus is telling them in John 14. He goes, this is what Jesus said. And later on in this letter, I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. Then no one's seen the Father in any time, but Jesus has come to make the Father known. This we have to know. Jesus has showed us who the Father is, even though we've never seen the Father. So let's talk about this. So 
what is a work? So you talk about, we've seen Jesus's works. What is a work that Jesus and the Father have done for you? Think about your life. Think about your relationship with him. Have you seen the works of Jesus in your life? Most of us, if we, if number one, we at least have, we had salvation, right? What was that Maybe. like? Maybe, right? Or if you haven't had that yet, have you had an experience where you've seen Jesus at work? Talk about that with your community. What does that look like? What was that like? How do you recognize his work so you can recognize the work of the Father? I guess that's the bigger question. How do you recognize the work of Jesus? Talk about that. Dwell on that. That's, that's a better question. Let's do that. We have to believe in Jesus, and we have to believe Jesus. This is a part of faith. This is a part of faith. Because faith isn't just an intellectual pursuit. It's not just something that just lives here. 
But there's a spiritual component. We'll say it lives here if you want a physical represent. Not that it actually physically lives in your chestal area. That makes no sense, right? But it isn't just an intellectual pursuit. Now, to believe in Jesus, to believe in Jesus, is to know him as, as Savior and Lord, to know that he arrived on earth as a substitute and a stand-in on account of our rebellion against God, on account of our sin. And he came to set us free, and he came to give us life and a lot of it, John 10.10. 10. And that he died. And three days later, he rose again from them. This is to believe in Jesus, that he is the first of many who will rise. And we will bodily arise again on the day of his return. And Jesus is returning as king in, in victory. And he will rule and reign for eternity. And eternity will be a place where death has been eliminated. Sickness, disease, and loss are eradicated. Good words. And we receive all of that in faith. And we know that's faith, believing in Jesus. Now, do we believe Jesus? Do we believe Jesus? Back to verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father. Believe what I'm saying. What I've shown you is true. Do we believe Jesus? Do we believe his words, his actions, what he said, and how he does it? Do we believe Jesus? We got we to gotta hang out here for a second. Do you believe Jesus? Not just here. Do you believe Jesus? Because this plays a huge role in what Jesus is about to tell the disciples. John 14, 15, 16, 17. It plays a huge role about Jesus is about ready to tell us. Do we believe Jesus? It's a brain shift. It's, it's a brain shift. It's a shift from our head and our spirit. It's, 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 it's a shift. Now, to believe in Jesus, well, let me say it like this. If we can believe in Jesus, all the things I listed earlier, salvation related, we have salvation. But the question still remains, do we believe Jesus? Not believe in Jesus. Do we believe him? Believe the words that he's spoken believe that he is in the Father? Do we believe Jesus? And this shift, this brain shift, this is faith. This is faith, and it's spiritual in nature, because this trusting in Jesus goes beyond an intellectual pursuit, and it's experienced deeply and sincerely. And that's why Jesus is trying to get the disciples to understand this. That they've seen, if they've seen Jesus, they've seen the Father. And if that's too much to grasp, if that's too much for you, just believe me because of what you've seen. Just believe me because of what you've experienced. Just believe me because what you know deep down, not in your head, deep down what is true. Do we believe Jesus? So here's something for us to talk about. So what does trusting look like in that deepness? Like deeply believing Are we being in too Jesus? ambiguous? Is that, is that, yeah, because I think that there's, there's a level that Andrew's talking about, like, oh yeah, I believe Jesus was here, right? He existed. He did these I believe things. in Jesus. He died for my he sins. He died for my sins, right? Great. Cool. Fantastic. But then we have to really think about, do we believe what his word says, that he did these miracles, that he wants to do those in our life, that we can really have that deep, sincere understanding 
that these things are for us today, now that Jesus really is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Do you really, be, what does that look like for you? Do you, be, do you really feel like you've grasped that, that you believe that deeply? Are you still in the process of that? Are you still figuring out? Are you still not even sure you believe in Jesus? Where are you at in that process? Talk about that with your community. Do we believe Jesus, what he did, what he said, how he did it, what he said about you? Do we believe him? Because he says a lot of things, especially in the Gospels and especially in John 14, 15, 16, 17, which we'll get to. He said a lot of things. Do we believe him? Over and over, Jesus said, he goes, he, he said that he cares about your needs, financial needs, emotional needs. He cares about your needs. 
and he wants you to have all that you need. We see it in, in Luke chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. He says, Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why, even the hairs of your head are numbered. Fear not, you are more value than a bunch of birds that poop on you. I added that part for emphasis. And Rosanna sees, right? You are of more value than a bunch of stupid birds. God knows every single one of them. Do we believe him when he says these things? Not here. Deeper than that. Here's the thing. He wants you to have the life the way God wanted you to have life. He wanted you to experience life the way before sin entered the world. John 10.10. 10. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come that you may have life and have a lot of it. Zoe. What else? The Holy Spirit has arrived. And the Holy Spirit is given to every single person who asks. Not just some. But everyone. Do we believe him? And here's the thing about, about, say this before I say this. You can't pick and choose these. You can't say I'm good with one, but I'm not good with two. Or you say like three and four, I am solid, but number seven and eight, nah, forget about it. You can't do that. Either Jesus is faithful and true and we believe him or we don't. He's not the tall tale kid. I wonder where they live now. I wonder what jobs they have. They work for marketing. So, <laughs> okay, sorry. It's bad. It's bad. They work for social media advertising. Okay. They're guess. influencers. They're, they're social media influencers. Oh, no. I'm super. Actually, you know, the funny thing is one of them is in marketing. We digress. Jesus, the Holy Spirit has given to every single person who asks. Luke chapter 11, verse 13 says, If you, who are evil, know how to give good, good, give good gifts. That's hard. That's a lot of G's. Give good gifts to your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to, to everyone who asks? What else about the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit reveals truth. The Holy Spirit shows us what is truth. John 16, 13. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. Do we believe Jesus? Do you believe Jesus? This is all, all these things that we're talking about today. This is Jesus talking. What else? Jesus gives us peace like we've never experienced before. He gives us peace like we've never experienced before. John 14, 27. We haven't read this yet, but it's coming. So this is, he goes, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your hearts be troubled and neither let them be afraid. This hasn't changed. This hasn't changed. He still does these things. He still says the same things. Why? Because Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do we believe him? See, this is why this verse is so important. This is why this verse is in every single four square church. Because if that verse is true, it means everything Jesus said is true and is still active. And that's what he's telling them to be. He goes, believe in me. So Jesus is saying, believe me, I'm going to drop truth bombs at you for the next little bit. The next part, everything I'm going to say while we're at this last supper is important. Believe my words. Believe my words. Do we believe Jesus? Question here for us. So how has God provided for your physical, mental, or emotional needs? Choose one. Talk about that and uh, share that with your community.
So what Jesus is about to tell us in the next few chapters in John is important. And it has to be received. And it has to be looked at through, through this part in John 14. Do we believe Jesus? Has to be looked at that through that lens. Has to be looked at. Because he's, he's going to challenge us. He's going to poke at us with this. And everything, every single thing he's going to say, is, we need to filter it back in the thing. goes, do we believe that? Do we believe that? Because Jesus is lighting a fuse. We talked about that last week. He's lighting a fuse. And it's a bomb. It's a bomb. Because if we believe him, it's going to explode. It's going to change a lot of things in our lives. What else? Let's look at some specific things he's, he's going he's gonna to say, say. We're going to get into these in the weeks and months to come, but let's, because we're going to start slowing down because he's dropping bombs. We're going to start slowing down, believe it or not. What's he talking about here? That the Holy Spirit has arrived and he's teaching us. John 14, 26 says this. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. What else is he saying? That we are to bear fruit and have good results when we are connected to him. The results come from when we're connected to him. John 14, or 15, 5 says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides and remains in me and I in him, it is that person that bears much fruit. And apart from me, you can do squat diddly. Added for emphasis, right? You can do nothing apart from me. Do we believe Jesus? Do we believe Jesus? What else? Jesus doesn't call us friends or doesn't call us servants anymore. He calls us friends. He calls us friends because he tells us what the Father is doing. In John 15, 15, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant doesn't know what he is master is doing, but I've called you friends for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. Notice these are all John 14, 15, 16, 17. These are all, these are all upcoming. John took good notes. Apparently. <laughs> um, maybe John understood the fact that he goes, do you believe me? Yeah. Do you believe me? Every single one of these, we need to ask ourselves, do we believe Jesus there? Do we believe Jesus said? What else did Jesus say? He goes, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I picked you, you didn't pick me. I was, the, I was the team captain. You're not. You were not the team. John 15, 16 says this. He goes, you did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you, and that you should go and bear fruit, have results, and that results should remain or abide, so that whatever you ask in my Father's name, he may give it to you. Do you believe Jesus? Not here. Not here. Deeper than that. Do we believe Jesus? What else he say in John 15, 7? It says this. If you abide in me, or remain in me, and my words, what I've told you, if those things remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Do you believe Jesus? Do you believe him? Do you believe him? Or do we think he's a tall tale kid? Do we believe him? What else? Did Jesus wants to heal your body, to heal all of your diseases. In Matthew 8, 2 through 3, And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before Jesus, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Let's follow that up right with Psalms 103.3. Who for, Jesus, who forgives all of your iniquity, who heals all of your diseases. Do we believe Jesus? Answer the question. 
Because if we don't answer the question, none of John 14, 15, 16, 17 will make any sense. It'll just be words on a page with no effect. Do we believe him? And the answer we need to proclaim, the answer to that question we, we need to, to proclaim, and that proclamation is how we should start every day. You should start the day with that proclamation. You should get out of bed, and when your foot hits the ground, you say, Jesus, I believe you today. You're brushing your teeth. Well, right? Right, whatever it is, we should start the day with the phrase. We should, in the middle part of the day, at lunchtime, we say, Jesus, I still believe you today. And before we go to bed, Jesus, I believed you today. That's our proclamation. We should speak, we should say it out loud. And let's confess that. And what I'm saying is, it's not a matter of repeating empty words over and over again like a mantra. Like, I'm just going to say it and say it and say it. No. But it's spoken from a deep down understanding that it's true. It's spoken from a knowing that Jesus is real, that what he says is true, that he is still the same, that he is constant, that he is powerful, that he is unchanging, and all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. That's why in Luke chapter 6, verse 45, it says this, it says, And the good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let your heart speak. Say the words out loud. Say them out loud to yourself. Jesus, I believe you. When you read, as we read John 14, 15, and 16, and the next months to come, when there's something that pops, whether it be one I just went through, mind you, there's many more. I just, that was a high level overview. When those things, when those things get read or when you read those in your own uh, Bible time every day, when you read this, say, Jesus, I believe you. I believe you. When Jesus makes a promise, say, Jesus, I believe you. Good treasure heart, speak it out. Let's believe Jesus in our heart. Let's believe Jesus deep down. And it starts with the step of trust to believe him. As Jesus says, if you can't believe me, just believe me on the account of what I've done. Just, just go with that. Philip, just go with that. You still don't get it. Just look, look, look. Look what I've done. Just go with that. Just go with that. And that belief is a decision in faith, and that decision transforms us. It transforms us. So let's talk about this. We're going to kind of quantify it a little bit because I don't, I mean, we can say, oh, do you believe Jesus? And all of us are going to want to say, oh, yes, I do. Yes, but, that's, that, that's our right? head. That's our, that's our head saying, yes, I do. But okay, if you're cool. going to really look at it, like, you know, at the doctor's office, they have the scale of pain. Like, which happy face are you? Like, where are you in the middle? So yes. we're going to think about from one to ten. Or you can big, I don't know, come up with something in your group, whatever you want to do. Uh, give yourself a rating. Like, where do you think you're at in that? Right, have, have you crossed the halfway point? Do you feel like I'm 75% of the way? Like, I think most Are of you the time, a B minus? Are you a B minus? Whatever it is, where are you at in that scale of really believing when you read the Bible and you read the words that Jesus said in this passage or in the other parts of the word? Where are you at? Like, is your, not just here. Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe that. But deep in your spirit and your heart, when you go to trust and you go to put your faith in something, when a challenge comes up, where are you at in that? Talk about that, whatever scale you want to give yourself.
Do we believe Jesus, not just believe in Jesus? I know it's a preposition, but it makes a difference. Do we believe Jesus? Let's decide that as we just kind of gave more substance to this. We either identified we're okay or we identified we're not as much as we want it to be. Let's wrestle with that. And it starts with that proclamation every day, Jesus, I believe you. It starts when you're reading through scriptures and you're reading through, the, reading through his promises. And after it's said, you're saying, Jesus, I believe you. When we read Hebrews 13, 8, we say, Jesus, I believe that. Jesus, I believe that. Let's choose him. Because in the next part of John, as we get into this, starting next week, Jesus is dropping truth bombs. He's not, he didn't just light a firework. He lit a firework factory on fire. He lit an entire factory on fire. Not a firework stand, a factory. He lit it all on fire. And he goes, watch this. Believe me. Believe me. Let's profess the statement, Jesus, I believe you. Not just here in our heads, but understanding it's true. Let's pray. Jesus, we make that proclamation right now. I believe you. I believe you. Now, Holy Spirit, we need your help to remind us. Holy Spirit, remind us that's true. Remind us and show us what that looks like. You are the one who reveals truth. You're the teacher. We receive your instruction, Holy Spirit. We receive you. We receive Jesus. We receive the Father. This next week, as we go about our, our things, let that be our proclamation in every situation. Jesus, I believe you and your authority. Amen.